Hi, Norman with iSaveTractors.com. In this video, we're going to talk about how to wire your garden tractor. Sometimes looking at your tractor's wiring can seem like a big tangled mess. Well, I'm going to bring us back into the shop and break this down for you. Okay, let's first talk about the tools and materials we're going to need to work on the wiring on our tractor. Uh, so these are the two primary tools you'll be using. These are called wire cutters and wire crimpers. Uh, this is the one I prefer. I use this one on special occasions because it has some of the tooling for the big crimps, for like battery cables. But for the most part, I use this one. They are very inexpensive. I believe I just got this at Walmart for like $6. Uh, I prefer the kinds of cutters where the crimpers are towards the front and the strippers are towards the back. It just makes it easier for me to do everything I need to do. So uh, that's a personal preference. So this tool right here will cut your wire, it will crimp all the different kinds of crimps, and it will also strip your wire. This is a must-have tool. Now, the wiring in your tractor, most everything in your tractor runs on a low amp like 3 or 5 amps or under. So you can get away with using uh, 16 gauge, 14 gauge, uh, even 18 gauge in a lot of applications. Uh, Everything is a short run too so there isn't really a lot of resistance there. So what I personally use is I use 14 gauge wire for everything uh, except for the battery connections. The battery connections you want to use a, a heavy gauge 6 gauge wire. So this is the wire that will go from your battery to your solenoid and then from your solenoid to your starter. This gauge wire will also be the wire that you use for the negative side of your battery that will go from the battery to your engine ground or your common ground. Uh, and of course it would be black. But for the most part, for all the other wiring, I use 14 gauge wire. All of these here are called crimp connectors. I highly recommend using nylon crimp connectors like this set right here. So you'll find these crimp connectors in two different varieties. You'll find them in nylon and you'll find them made out of PVC. The PVC ones tend to crack and it's, it's just a lot harder to get a secure crimp. Now the most common uh, connection you'll use are these right here which are these uh, female uh, spade type connectors. And this will, these are the connectors that will connect onto the back of your ignition switch. They'll connect onto uh, prongs on your solenoid, like this solenoid right here. It has these little uh, prongs right here. You just snap them in there. So these are very common. You'll also find yourself using ring terminals, ring connectors like this. These are kind that you just screw onto like a stud and then you uh, screw a bolt onto it to secure it. You'll also probably need a butt splice at some point. And this is just two female sides. You just stick a wire into each end and you crimp it down. I use these if I have to like split a wire into two. If I have to have a single hot wire come and I split it into two different directions for say headlights, I use a butt splice. And you also will probably end up using a male uh, connector like this. What these do is they go into the female connector. So if you wanted, uh, say, your headlights, if you ever wanted to take your hood off and without having to undo your wiring, you can use these kind of uh, male and female connectors so they fit together. That way, when you need to remove the hood, you can just separate them like that. Now let's go over on how to actually use the tools and crimp a connector. I'm going to use this long piece of uh, 14 gauge wire. What you do is you go to your tool, uh, you go to where you the wire stripper parts are, which for this one is right in the middle. This is 14 gauge, so all you do is you open it up, stick it in about uh, a quarter of an inch, th uh, three eighths of an inch, uh, clamp it down with your hands, pull it out, and then there it is. Easy. So I've stripped it, I've stripped the insulation off this copper wire. Next, you take your connector, you push it through. Sometimes you just gotta give the wire a little twist there. You put it through like that. And then towards the tip of my tool is where the crimp is. And see all these colors right here? This crimp section is for anything between 26 gauge and 14 gauge. And all you do is you go up to this part of the connector, you put your tool around it and you just squeeze it tight. That's it. Now that is crimped easy, right? 
Uh, you can give it a little tug, make sure it's on there securely. And this is why I like the nylon connectors. Uh, sometimes if you use the PVC ones and you push it down too hard, the PVC actually breaks and then the connector falls off. But with these nylon ones, I can push down as hard as I can to get a good tight crimp and it won't break and it stays just like that. Now let's talk about the actual wiring theory behind your tractor. Now when you look at your tractor's wiring, it can be confusing, but it's best to break it down into the four individual primary circuits that run through your tractor. And the circuits are the starting circuit, the ignition circuit, the charging circuit, and the accessory circuit. Let's examine each of these circuits by themselves, examine the components and how they're wired. So let's begin with the starting circuit. These four items make up the components in your starting circuit. The first component is your battery. Everything begins and ends with your battery. In order for electrical flow to happen, there needs to be a closed loop beginning at the positive side of your battery, looping all the way around, and getting back to your negative side of the battery. If this loop is not closed and not connected, no power will flow. So that's an important principle to keep in mind. This is your ignition switch. This is a three position rotary switch. You're all familiar with it, it's just like in your cars. The way it works is, on this particular ignition switch, there are five connections on the back. Five male spade type connectors. When your key is in the off position, there is no contact made between any of these. When you turn your key switch to the run position, which is the position 2, inside this switch it will make an electrical connection between the B terminal, standing for battery, to all the other terminals except for the start terminal. Now these terminals are marked Right here is uh, R for rectifier, B for battery, S for start, I for ignition, and A for accessories. So when this key switch is in the run position, everything is connected to each other except for the S1. Now to connect the S1, which is what initiates your starter, you turn your key one final click and it connects all the terminals. So now power is being thrown to everything. When you let go of the key, there's a spring inside that brings it back to the run position, which turns off your starter. The next component in the starting circuit is your starter solenoid. This is a key component. Without the starter solenoid, you'd have to lean over and essentially jump start your starter every time you want to start it. The starter solenoid is great. It allows you so you can start your engine from your seat. And what it is, is a, it's a relay switch, which means it takes a small amperage electrical connection, uh, which is down here between these two prongs, it activates a larger, higher amperage electrical connection, which is up here, which is what turns your starter. So what happens is when you turn your key to the start position, it sends a low amp current through these two prongs here, which forces an electromagnet inside to close the connection between these two larger lugs up here. Your battery power is connected on one side and then your starter is on the other. When that electromagnet connects these connections, that high amperage flow will go from right here all the way to your starter. And Let's talk about the starter. Here's a starter. This is a brand new starter that we offer. Uh, and the way this works is, it's essentially, this is a motor, it's, uh, there's a copper wound center core here, and it's surrounded by permanent magnets. When you run power through this uh, wire copper core, it creates an electromagnet, and that electromagnet opposes the magnets on the side, and that opposition causes this starter to spin, starting your engine. Now, what happens is your power, your 12 volt power will come through here, it will go through the inside core, the armature, and it will ground through this casing. Now that's important, this ground. What happens is that electrical flow needs to make a closed loop. So this is ground to your engine block, and your engine block is typically grounded to your tractor's frame, 
which then leads its way back to the negative side of the battery. These ground connections are known as a common ground. That means every electrical component that is through your circuit must follow its way back to the negative side of your battery and it does that by using the conductive metal of the engine and the tractor frame. If you didn't have a common ground you'd have a, a lot more extra wires all going to the same place. It would make this process even messier. So now that you know each of these four components, let's wire them together and discuss what's going on here. So this is your starting circuit all wired up. Now this is just for illustration's sake. Obviously this is not going to work right now. But let's just kind of go over it from the beginning and show you where everything goes. So this battery, uh, this is your negative post to your battery. This you want connected to your engine ground or your common ground. So you want to have a black heavy 6 gauge wire going from here to a metallic part on your engine. On this side you want to have a heavy 6 gauge red wire going from your battery to one side of your starter solenoid. Now this battery, this cable right here, this orange one, is going to go from the same side of that starter solenoid, lead back to the battery terminal or the B terminal of your ignition switch. This blue wire represents the starting circuit, the activation circuit I should say on your starter solenoid. So this blue wire is connected to the terminal marked S and that goes to one of the small terminals out in front right there. Now the second blue wire I have connected to ground. Now this starter solenoid connects to ground in one of two ways. It connects through one of these small posts or it connects to the mounting feet that is on the solenoid itself. Now the reason we have two options is a lot of uh, dashboard towers are not made out of metal like on our Cub Cadet 149 it's actually made out of fiberglass so I cannot mount it, I cannot ground it through the mounting feet. So when I installed it onto my tractor, onto that dash part, I had to route the ground to a different metallic part. So that's where the second port comes in. And it doesn't matter which one you put it in, left or right, it's all the same. Uh, so you can put your wire coming through an extra switch on the right or the left side, as long as the other one contains your ground. Now this wire would just lead to a metallic part of your tractor frame and that's how it would make it to ground. What happens is when you turn that switch power will go from travel down here to this part of the solenoid down this orange wire through the switch comes back up to the small post of the starter solenoid it goes across it and then power will lead back down here to your common ground. Your common ground carries electricity all the way back to your negative post. And that is how it forms the close the loop. Now when that happens, that electromagnet inside energizes and all of a sudden it connects these two posts together. So now power will run from the positive post down here, come across to your starter, through the armature in the starter, through the mounting plate, back to the common ground, and back to your battery. That's the closed loop there, and that's what activates your starter. Now here is your ignition circuit all stripped down to its bare basics. It contains these five components. It begins with the battery, the ignition switch, the ignition coil, the condenser, and the set of breaker points. Now remember, everything begins and ends with your battery. I've disconnected the connections just to make this uh, easy to follow, but just assume that your battery is always connected to your system. Now, same goes with the ignition switch. I uh, took out the connections in the starting circuit just so you can see uh, with clarity what's going on. So the B terminal and the S terminal we already talked about. Imagine those are still there. Now for your ignition system, your ignition circuit I should say, uh, you're going to take a wire and it's going to begin at the I terminal of your ignition switch. It's going to lead to the positive terminal of your ignition coil. And then on the negative side of your ignition coil, you're going to put your condenser and a wire will lead from that negative terminal down to your breaker points. 
This center post here on your ignition coil is for your spark plug cable and your spark plug. So what happens when you turn your key to the on or start position? Uh, the key switch energizes the I terminal. It sends 12 volts down this side of the coil. Now the breaker points open and close with the movement of the camshaft. When the breaker points are closed, 12 volt power will run through the primary winding in this ignition coil, come back around, come down through the points, and the points are grounded to the engine, which is our common ground. That power will go from the points all the way back to the negative side of the battery. Now when your camshaft pushes the breaker points open, what it does is this initial electrical connection breaks. And when that breaks, it induces a magnetic uh, electrical pulse on the secondary winding of this coil. Uh, to prevent, I don't need to go too technical in it in this video, I've talked about it in other articles written on my website as well as in Lawn and Garden Tractor magazine. But essentially what happens is, that steps up the voltage here. So we're using 12 volts. It, when this circuit breaks, it induces a high voltage, usually around 25,000 volts, out of this secondary winding, which travels to your spark plug, causing a spark and then thus ignition. Now the condenser comes into play is when this, when the breaker points open and this primary electrical circuit just stops, that power has to go somewhere. So what that, that does is that power goes to ground. Now this condenser is grounded via this uh, mounting bracket. And a condenser is a capacitor. It's like a charging station. So when that electricity needs some place to go, it goes into this capacitor and this capacitor sucks up and absorbs all of the energy. And when you wire in the points, your wire wants to connect to this part of your points right here. There's a little screw and a little piece of spring steel as well as a plastic insulator. Uh, you can make this connection a few different ways. You can take a ring terminal and just cut it so it's like a C-shaped, or you can use one of these kinds of connectors. It almost looks like a two-prong uh, fork. And what you do is you just put it right behind in between the screw and this uh, piece of spring steel and then you take a Phillips head screwdriver and you tighten it down right there. That's where you make the connection on the points. Now your charging circuit consists of three components. Your stator, which I don't have one right now to illustrate, uh, your regulator rectifier, and your key switch. Now these two blue wires represent the two wires coming from your stator. These are typically coming from underneath your flywheel on your engine. So you locate these. These two blue wires are marked AC minus and AC plus. That stands for alternating current plus and minus. That's what your stator produces. The job of this regulator rectifier is to turn that alternating current into a direct current to charge your battery. So these two blue wires coming off the stator are going to go on the terminals marked AC minus and AC positive. On this regular rectifier, they are on the outside. The center terminal is B plus. That's what it's labeled, and that stands for positive direct current for your battery. So this orange cable is going to run from that B plus terminal all the way back to your key switch, and then it's going to go into the terminal marked R for rectifier. And since this ignition switch is already wired to your battery, what happens is it, while your engine is turning, it's producing alternating current. That comes to the regular rectifier, which gets turned into direct current. It feeds through this orange wire, through your ignition switch, and ultimately back to your battery, giving it a charge. And here is the accessory circuit. The circuit consists of three primary components. The accessory in this case are the headlights. It also consists of your headlight on and off switch and your ignition key switch. The wiring begins at your ignition switch. There's a wire coming off the terminal marked A for accessory. It leads up to one of the terminals on your on and off switch, and this on and off switch is wired in series, meaning it's wired in the middle of this particular circuit. The second wire comes off of the second terminal, it leads up to your headlights, and your headlights are wired in parallel. In parallel means this second headlight is wired into its own circuit. 
For example, when you turn on the ignition switch and then you turn on your light switch, 12 volt power is going through this headlight and it continues going through the headlight via this white ground wire. This white wire leads to ground. It's also feeding 12 volts into the second blue wire that goes to the second headlight, which has its own white wire, which also leads to ground. So both headlights, when wired in parallel, are receiving 12 volts. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to wire your tractor. If you need any of these parts or components for your tractor, please visit our website, isavetractors.com. We also have many written articles and wiring diagrams for your tractor all on our website. My name is Norman. Thanks for watching.